So we're going to advance forward to actually machining the blades of this impeller. And to do the blades, we're going to use an add-in inside a master cam called Blade Expert to machine this region. And I've colored the faces just to kind of give everybody a little bit better visual of what we're machining here. Under the Blade Expert add-in, we're going to start by giving it a comet. Uh, we'll call this Rough Between Blades. And let's select our bullnose end mill here. Next, we have to select a cut pattern. We have to tell Mastercam how we want to cut. Whether we want roughing, finishing, etc. For this, I'm going to offset from the hub. So my tool pass will be coming from the hub going upwards on this blade to the left. And we're going to take a look at some of the other options that we have here. I want to keep this for zigzag. I actually like the order at which we're cutting. So let's look at our part definition. And right now we have to define our blades. So we can see here we have color options as well. Let's select the inner portion of the blades that we're going to machine. So I'll start here, select the left side, and we can end our selection. Now we don't have any fillets, but I do need to select the hub. I need to tell Mastercam where the hub is at between the blades. And we can end our selection here as well. If needed, there are other options. But let's green check OK. And we'll look at the multi-threading manager right now. With the Blade Expert add-in, Mastercam automatically tilts the tool as needed to get the maximum area of cut on our part. Now this is designed to be able to cut all the other blades as well and typically what we would do in the past is go to tool paths um, under the tool paths tab utilities group we would trans transform the tool path right we're not going to do that here let's go back to our parameters right now we're going to tell mastercam how many segments we have but there's an option that we're also going to have to adjust as well we'll come back to that Right now, Mastercam knows that we have nine segments. So, with these nine segments, uh, what we're actually going to see without the other adjustment is Mastercam just knows those nine segments are there. We still have it set for doing one segment. Underneath this, we could tell it how many of these segments we want to machine as well. So it knows we have nine segments. Let's go ahead and give it a value of nine to machine all segments here. With that in mind, we can also do partial parts as well if we need to do 90 degrees or maybe 180 degrees of this part. As this processes, let's go ahead and green check after this is done. And we'll be able to see all nine segments being done all in one shot without a toolpath transformation, which also means that we get the nice blend between one segment of blades to the next. The good thing about the Blade Expert add-in is I can actually copy this afterwards. Now with copying, Mastercam will already have the selection of my blades done, such as the blade faces, the hub, etc. When copying this toolpath, everything inside of Mastercam is still reading the original segment, so it's taking a little bit of time. But we'll go ahead and adjust this as well. Inside of the parameters, we're going to make some adjustments to our cut pattern. Instead of roughing between the blades, let's select the, let's do the finishing of the floors. So we'll select our hub here. Now I can tell it from left to right, right to left, but I actually like to start in the center of my blades and work towards the wall. Makes it a little easier on my tool as we approach the walls coming from the center going outwards. 
and we'll have it set for climb milling as well. So we're simply going to green check OK on this. Right now, you see that we still get the nine segments because that setting was already set. We also start from the center and we work our way out, starting from the center of the blade. And of course, Mastercam's giving us the tilt values that we need. Let's copy this next operation. Just to clear things up, let's rename these processes. And I didn't mean to hit enter, so we'll go back. It's no big deal. And let's label this one finish hub. And let's do the other one as well for finish blades. Let's adjust the parameters for the finish blades. Under cut pattern, we're going to set this for blade finishing. And do this as a pocket so we can go in between our blades there right down the middle just like we see here and we can make other adjustments as needed I'm going to keep this for the defaults under the cut pattern you can see that I still have the same machining definition the part definition selected so we'll green check and it's letting me know that I need something with a spherical tool so we can correct this by selecting the ball nose end mill for the finishing here. We can also use tapered end mills and barrel mills, etc. As we see here, we have our blade finishing. Let me correct the bull nose here as well for my finish of the hub. So we're matching our finishing tool here. And we'll move this down to the bottom. I'll minimize everything just to make it a little more clear on my screen. And save. One thing I say quite often is save is your friend. So it depends on how much you want to lose. So let's go ahead and run this through our simulator. Now there's a lot more going on in this part, more specifically with the roughing. But I at least want to see a portion of this being simulated here on the machine. Typically when I'm processing a job like this for my machine, I'll watch the whole thing process through just to make sure that all my tilts and any kind of tool clearances actually are, are not being violated, whether it's with my part or with the machine in general. Let's just make sure that I have this running. All right. All right. So it's preparing the simulation data. I believe I hit that twice. So let's see. Okay, I did. So we'll just say okay to that as it was processing the simulation to begin with. And I'm going to zoom out, and we'll just simply hit play on this. And let's uh, let's speed up this rough a little bit. And let's go right to the finishing of the outside. You can see our nice tilt here. And let's speed this up so the tool starts to climb down the bottom just for the finishing of the OD. This is great if you don't have a lathe and you need to finish the outside. So once the finishing of the outside is done, we can see that we have a real nice clearance. There's no red of the chuck hitting the spindle. We can swap our tools and we can come in with that bull nose end mill, roughing out the outside. This is going to allow us to see if there's any kind of collisions as the table moves around. Now, being that this does take a moment, I've taken the time to just put aside a quick verify here so we could take a look at what this process looks like when it's finishing. Let's take a moment to look at that here on my next screen. So as we can see here, 
we have the finishing of the blades, the floor, as well as the rough operation being done in one shot. 